Top of the morning, everybody. Um, this is my video on Sir Dougald Clerk and his contributions to the scientific community for my Physics 2210 course. Um, my name is Carson Palmer. I'm a sophomore studying mechanical engineering here at Dixie State University. And in this video, I will enlighten you of Sir Dougald Clerk's scientific discoveries. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. All right, so a little bit about Mr. Clerk's background. He was born in Scotland in March of 1854. His father was actually a machinist. He was very skilled, and his mother was a stay-at-home mom, um, just like a lot of women were in that time period. Um, growing up, when he was 15 years old, he started his mechanical training by working in his father's machine shop. Um, there is where he gained most of his experience with mechanical drawing and design. Um, and then in 1883, he was 29 years old, and that's when he got married to Margaret Hani, and they lived happily ever after. Um, and then once he was old and gray, he went the way of the world in November of 1938 at the age of 78. He passed away in a small town called Ewhurst in Surrey, England. So on the last slide, I decided to go over the education part in a different slide because it is quite extensive and I felt like it needed its own slide. So. Um, Sir Dougald Clerk actually had an outstanding academic career. He, from the time he was 15 until he went to school, he received over 15 certificates from the Science and Art Department of London, which is pretty crazy. Some of his certificates are in chemistry, light, heat, magnetism, electricity, mathematics, and machine drawing. These will all be pretty important later in his life. Um, after he did that, he intended on becoming a chemical engineer, so he went to study at Anderson's University and Yorkshire College, which is in the modern day Leeds University. Um, he gained a lot of experience through a type of internship, working under one of his college professors that actually went on to be one of the leading government chemists in London. So pretty experienced guy there. Um, so, Sir Dougald Clerk, having such a big brain and a good education, put himself to work and he received a bunch of incredible awards um, on the government level. So, for example, he's fellowshipped in the Royal Society, which you can only do if you've made substantial contributions to the natural sciences. Um, and that comes from, like, royalty, like the Queen. And if you think that's crazy, he was later deemed a Knight Commander of the most excellent order of the British Empire, which is the second highest ranking you can receive in the order of the British Empire. So like, I don't know, he got deemed a knight and that has to be done by the queen. And if you say that you've never wanted to be a knight, I think that's a lie because it's pretty cool, pretty prestigious, I think. So that's his education. Um, and he used all that to go on to develop and design his major contribution, which is the two-stroke motor. Okay, so Mr. Sir Knight Dougald Clerk began to work on his own engine designs um, in the late 1870s, um, October of 1878. He started modifying a Brayton engine. Um, a Brayton engine is a, it was one of the first motor designs that used um, fuel compression to combust the fuel and that's how the, the engine worked was off based off fuel compression and so Mr. Clerk threw in a spark plug and tried to get that motor designed to work by actually combusting the fuel um, using a spark versus compression and then he ended up um, arriving at this design so for every working cylinder like we have here, the one that gives you horsepower and stuff, there's also a pumping cylinder here on the right that pumps air into the working cylinder each cycle. And so it's kind of, it's not the traditional two-stroke engine that we have today. I'll talk about that later. But it is the first successful two-stroke engine um, that used in-cylinder compression to create horsepower. And so that's pretty cool. Um, 
that he was able to arrive at this crazy looking design and engineer that. Um, I believe that most of his training and machine drawing and all of his other scientific knowledge helped him to arrive at this conclusion. Um, so he patented this design in 1881 and then actually wrote three books about the motor. Um, they basically talked about how the engine worked, um, included detailed descriptions of how and why he chose the design he did, and it's kind of an interesting read. Um, so this is interesting, the pumping cylinder. Some people actually consider it to be one of the first superchargers um, because it pumps air into the cylinder. And while that technically fits the description of a supercharger um, in this book, one of the books that he wrote, he actually says like, no, this isn't a supercharger because it's not designed to compress air and force it into the cylinder. It just helps with the airflow. And so um, some people consider it to be a supercharger, but Sir Douglas Clerk does not. Okay, so anybody that knows a little about motors might recognize that Sir Douglas Clerk's um, design is quite a bit more complicated than the design that we see nowadays in the two-stroke motor. Um, in this design, there's obviously two cylinders required um, for for it to run, and then in the modern day motor we just have one cylinder where we've got the intake goes into the reed valves and then the fuel air mixture enters into the motor and then gets pulled up into the combustion chamber or the cylinder and then gets blown out of the exhaust port. Um, so quite a few scientists made um, they contributed work and refined Douglas Clerk's work or just made better motors. Um, one of these was Joseph Day he actually patented patented the uh, the design of a three-port two-stroke engine in 1889. Um, so ever since then, we've just been getting better and better motors. And then today we enjoy two-stroke motors and things like dirt bikes, um, some wave runners. Um, another example would be snowmobiles. A lot of snowmobiles run two-stroke engines. Um, so basically, thanks to Doug Old Clerk and his innovation, um, we're able to enjoy smaller motors that are light and efficient. Okay, well that wraps it up. Um, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed my presentation about the two-stroke motor and Sir Doug Old Clerk. Um, he's quite the interesting guy. I hope that you can truly appreciate this reference page for what it is. It is quite neat and if you thought my presentation was a little boring I apologize I'm not too tech savvy with all the video audio visual stuff um, so if it was boring to you just turn it on at night and fall asleep to it maybe you'll learn something put you to sleep real quick but thanks for watching